So we've spent some time on these various concepts of writing the long-form blogs. We're going to talk about one more thing. We'll wrap up for the day. And the next time, we're going to talk about Tumblr. Uh, WordPress has been the long-form blog in that we are writing 100 words, 500 words, whatever. And then when we look next week, we'll talk about Tumblr, which is short form, which will feel much more like a social network. And then you can decide which do you like better, WordPress or Tumblr, or both. And you're free to use both. If you notice, we have over on um, our posts, there was a spot under Publicize that we could send our WordPress blog posts over to Tumblr. So you could set it up, once we talk about Tumblr next week, that whatever you write here will automatically go to Tumblr. Um, but that'll be next week. What we're going to wrap up today is a discussion on perhaps the examples of how to uh, make money off of your blog. This is, a, this is a big discussion and not everyone would quite care about this, but I'm going to start us off to look at this if we're interested. I've mentioned this before, one of my blogs, this is a personal blog about comics, uh, and what I've got here on the sidebar is an ad. There's an ad there. If someone is interested in this, they can click. They read one of the articles. Uh, there's another ad. They can click on that. So this is one way that people make money off of their blogs. They have a passion they write about, icing on the cake, maybe make a little money off of clicks. This other side of mine, um, let me show it in this way as well. This is another site. Uh, got different articles, let's say here, build an app with Android. So there's this article, people read this, okay, looks good, and then at the end of, of this one, there's this. This article is how to is about how to build apps for Android. And then here are links. Buy an Android phone so that you can build an app. Because I say in the article, these techniques here can be applied. And let's say you've got an iPhone and you want to create you want to create Android apps, you can get a $40 Android phone for you to then test your apps. Instead of testing your apps virtually on the computer, which is a, a viable way, but it's much better to test apps on a real device. You don't need a $500 Android phone. You can get a very good $40 one. That's one I recommend. I teach an Android class at this college. The new one is starting in two months, I think. And in that class, I, uh, I say, if you've got a real phone to work with, it's the, the class is better because then you can really test your devices. So what I've got here on this article, I've got sort of like, hey, really guiding people, hey, buy this phone. Now, if they buy the phone through one of these links, I get a little cut out of it. I make a little money off of it. So let's take a little bit of a discussion to talk about this. Uh, there's two ways. These are two different things that I was showing here, actually. Um, so I'll make the note here how to make money. These are possible ways to make money off your blog. One is Google AdSense, and one is Amazon Affiliates Program. Google AdSense is Google will somewhat randomly add ads to your site. It gets, uh, it gets smart at a certain point and it'll add the right kinds of ads depending on your content and the visitor. Because if I'm a comic book fan and I go to that site and then it's giving me advice, I mean it's giving me a link for some sort of clothing shop, I might not be interested in that so I won't click and I won't earn anything off of it. So in the beginning these are somewhat random but then they get smarter. Google AdSense, this is free to set up. Both of these are free to set up. If you go through the process of going through Google AdSense, it will have you create an account. We might not do all of this step by step together, really. I'm just going to give you the ideas to think about this. If you go look up Google AdSense and create a free account, what's going to happen there then is that you can create 
ads to add to your blog posts. Question. Pretty much. You're going to take that same code that Google gives you and you're going to add it to all of your sites so that you can co be collecting your profit from all of that one site. Yes. So if you go through this route, like I'm showing in the example here, and depending on your site and its theme and all of that, you can have an ad in your article. So if this is relevant to the user, they can click it, and then you'll profit from it a bit. How much is going to depend on a variety of factors, how much traffic you get to your blogs, um, what kind of ads are there, because actually you get more money off of adding ads here that are alcohol related, believe it or not. Um, so that's AdSense. It shows it on this site like this. Another example site on this site over here. Uh, it's a little less uh, obtrusive. It's down on the side over here. If they went this far in, they might see it there. Music Production College. That might be interesting to people. They click there. They start their LA film career there. And you get a little bit of money off of that. Uh, the more traffic you get, the more clicks you get, the more you earn. So that's why this class, you're going to learn blogging. You're going to learn and apply the tips and techniques we've talked about here, what to blog, how to blog, to get that traffic, to then get these clicks. The other way to do it, like I showed in that other blog, is the Amazon affiliate program. This one is, is more work, but it could give you more results. Because here, these are more like handcrafted ads that you add to your site. Handcrafted ads you add to your site. Google AdSense will basically give you the code and say, here's the code, put this on your site, and then they take care of the rest. They add, they put the ads, they, it's mostly about what kind of ads. So Google takes care of that. Amazon affiliate program is that uh, you create the Amazon account, you go to a page on Amazon, find a product, they will give you the code, a special code for that product, and then you add it to your blog post and it'll show up something like this. You can style it in different ways. But I've styled it like this because people are reading how easy it is to make your own Google, uh, your own Android apps. I don't have an Android phone. Oh, I can get one for $40. And then do what the blog says. So I like this one more than Google AdSense. It is more work because you have to go to Amazon and you have to go to Amazon and, and find a product. And it can be any kind of product, just about just about any product on Amazon. Um, you know, tablets and diapers and soup and shoes, anything. And when you've got it set up. There will be a button at the top that says get the get the link. And you can get it in three different ways. As a simple text link, as a nice looking grid like this, or as an individual product. You can have one particular product nicely showed off, tied into Amazon. You add these things to your blog post, and again, it's it's more about the clicks. So the more you do this, the better. It's very easy to go overboard and add lots of ads. And you see this on so many websites. They want those clicks, so they put an ad up on the top, on the side, and in the article. And at that point, I'm annoyed, and I won't click any. So I try to be a little bit more judicious about this. I'm going to put one ad, not obtrusively. It's not going to pop up and block my reading view. You see that a lot. It is effective to some degree because sometimes people accidentally click the ad instead of close. And you do profit from that. But uh, I try to put this at the end, unobtrusive. I tie it in with the concept of what I've written, of course. I don't want a non sequitur type of ad here, an ad that doesn't make sense for what I wrote. 
but I added the ad at the end, or in this particular site, I put it in here, and it's not blocking you from reading anything, and maybe it's not as effective, but if they really care about this and they do see, this is interesting, and I'll click on it. Now, I'm not going to click on my own ad because that's bad. You don't want to click on your own ads. You want real people to click on your ads. It's not obtrusive, so that they might not kick, click on it on that one. But when they're on this site, where it's over here on the side, it's still not obtrusive. People are going to ignore it, sure. But maybe something does pop up there when someone reads another post. You know, these are all linked together, and you read another post, you gain another ad. This is Google randomly putting an ad, and it may or may not be relevant. Here's, again, music production. Different kinds of ones. Start download, all of that. If someone clicks on these things, um, I profit from them. So we won't, we won't go through the steps together, but just to guide you, what I would do is, is search Google AdSense, and that'll give you the address, I guess if you want it directly, google.com slash AdSense. It's, it's a bit of a setup. You have to either use an existing Gmail account or you have to create a new one. You have to go through this process. It'll ask you for verification and a social security number and bank account information. And that sounds, hey, that sounds very obtrusive. Well, you're going to be getting money off of this. You're going to be getting paid. You're going to be, in a sen some sense, a sort of independent contractor. So it does have to be filled in with a W-4 and all of this real tax information because you, will, you could start to get, you know, worst case scenario, a few cents at a time, best case scenario, a few dollars at a time, best, best case scenario, dozens or hundreds of dollars at a time, depending on many factors. But that's how these big sites out there, like, um, what was that one site we visited earlier, vegan DIY, yeah, veganbaking.net. Um, you know, this one here is going to have ads. Everything is going to have ads. And hopefully they're not obtrusive, and hopefully they're relevant, and that'll guide people or entice people more to actually click right here, Sun Basket, Paleo Cooking Made Easy, which is funny because it's a vegan site. Uh, paleo, paleo is a meat-heavy diet, and it's on a vegan site. So that's what I'm saying about uh, Google AdSense not being that smart. Uh, but it gets better. So anyway, if I were to click on that, I don't think anyone's going to click on that if they're on this kind of site, but if I was on a protein-friendly kind of site and that popped up, hey, I might want to do that, and that author will profit from it. Uh, so on your own, you can go explore Google AdSense, turn your passion into profit. AdSense is a free, simple way to earn money by placing ads on your website. Uh, so. It's going to be a setup, but you can go through it yourself. When, it, when it's all set up, it'll say, okay, take this code, add it to your site. Um, and it's just basically copying and pasting it into your post, or your footer, or your sidebar. You can research that on your own. Not everyone is interested in this, so I just want to take you this far to show you Google AdSense. You'll have to kind of figure out how it works, and it's not complicated. You can read the documentation. Yes? You could. It depends on the business. Like this one over here. This is this is a business site over here. Um, let's say if you're working for a business, um, you have to check with that business if we can do this. I wouldn't put this on a client's site where I'm profiting from this unless I have it written in stone that it's okay. Exactly. As long as they say it's okay, yeah. On this business site, it's got a Google AdSense right there. Over for Amazon, you need to look at Amazon Affiliate Program. That link will be affiliate-program.amazon.com and that needs a little setup as well. You need to create an account. You can use an existing Amazon account, create a new Amazon account, it'll ask you a bunch of information. One thing that I do want to tell you since I've gone through this twice and you live and learn, I thought I did it right the first time and then they shut it down. 
and they told me what I did wrong. And even though I argued with them with like five emails, they said, sorry, we've shut it down, you have to start over. This is what's going on. At a certain point, Amazon affiliate through the process will ask you, what's the name of your website? And in my opinion, they did not specify specifically enough what address to put. So it had asked me, put here a list of the addresses where you're going to put your Amazon ads. So I put twitter.com, I put facebook.com, etc. I had set it up, I had used it a couple of weeks. They don't quite check if you've set it all properly until you make your first sale, until someone clicks to buy something from your link, then they check it. So someone followed my affiliate Amazon link, was going to buy my product, I mean the product, and I was going to profit, and then Amazon shut it down. And they told me, when you set this up, you didn't put in your specific link, you just put in the name of a website. And when I set this up, from what I understood, that's what they wanted. But they wanted twitter.com slash victor, facebook.com slash victor, they wanted, you know, victor.com slash blog, they wanted a very specific page, where are you going to show your ads, specifically? So I was back and forth with them several times, several were nice and kind and told me what I did wrong, but they were all adamant about not reinstating the account, and one was very mean and said, this is the last email about this, start over. So, I ignored that one and replied to one of the ones that was nice, and then they answered me nice again and said, please start your account over, this is what you did wrong. Um, and I told them also, well, do I need to list all the possible sites that I'm going to put my affiliate links on now? What if a brand new site appears at the future? Is that going to be detrimental for me? And they said basically, yes, come back and add the site every time. So maybe a brand new social network is going to come out next month and I'm going to start to put, to put Amazon affiliate links. I need to remember to come back to Amazon control panel and add the new profile. So amazingsite.com slash victor. Or it might cause me problems. So I, I saw that this one was a few more hoops to jump through than Google AdSense. They seem to be very loosey-goosey about it and it's been okay so far. But on Amazon, uh, they were a little more strict, so I'm telling you my mistake so you don't have it. Try to be specific. What, you'll see it when you're creating the account. It'll say, what pages are you going to put your links on? And you have 50, 50 possible spaces, five zero, 50 spaces for you to add websites. I would be specific just in case. Once all of that is set up, then like I said, you browse Amazon, you'll have a brand new control strip at the very top. You're going to be browsing Amazon, you're going to see a product, just about any product, books, technology, Kindle books, music, whatever. And when you're looking at a particular product, at the top there'll be a stripe that says, give me the code. Copy that code, paste it into your post, and then it'll show up however you've set it up. It'll show up like that. Let's see if I've got another example. It'll show up in the post itself. I didn't put one in here, but it'll show up in the post how you've requested the code. Those are the two big ways. There's plenty of other ones also, but these are the two that I'm telling you about at the moment. So right here for Amazon, beware. Uh, be specific in naming the links you will advertise on. It will ask you and you want to put in those addresses specifically. But their tech support is good. I, I, got, I went back and forth with them rather quickly via email uh, to understand what went wrong and I got uh, good answers from about three out of four people that responded uh, from Amazon. So as, as I said previously, and I'll just mention it again, there is a book that I recommend in the class. There's a link to it right there, and full disclosure, that is an Amazon affiliate link. I went to that book on Amazon, it gave me my specific link to it, I put it on my syllabus, and if anyone buys the book via that link, I profit a little bit off of that. Uh, if you do affiliate links and such, it is up to you how you disclose it. If you disclose it, there's no right or wrong answer really. 
but oftentimes it's a good idea to disclose these things just you know for good PR that uh, follow my link to help me out buy the product through this link to donate to us you know be open about it it's not a bad thing you know product endorsement and that such and that sort of thing if you're open about it So um, that's the last thing I wanted to touch on for the day regarding affiliate links. Yes? Yeah, and for, I don't know, affiliate links, you can quote your links or leave them like that. I would leave them like this. If you do the extra step of cloaking them or renaming them, it's not much, personally for me, benefit. You could cloak them, like maybe you could change that address if you actually say it's something like, you know, victor.com slash blog book. Because right now that's you know, a randomly generated name. If you cloak it, if you change it with a link shortener, it might be just for you to easily remember it. But there's no big detriment to the profitability of it. But for example, I have a link over here that is j.mp slash vmc finance. Internally, that's a big old gibberish address, but I've shortened that to this memorable <coughs> name, and that's guiding people to a specific link instead of it having a big gibberish name. You can do this by setting up a free account at bit.ly.com. There's many of these out there. These are known as link shortening sites. This is one of them. You go here, you create a free account, you give your bit.ly account a big address, or a random kind of address, and then you can change it so that it has a more sort of memorable type of link. So VMC Finance that cloaks the address youtube.com slash channel slash U-C-O-A-U-U-N-2-A-M-O-Q really rolls off the tongue. So what I did was I went there and made that address. Hello everyone and welcome to another Takes episode you to the YouTube channel. Of EMC Inc. Financial you can do that on Bitly. Take I'm the Amazon comments. link that it gives you. So we're take this weird gibberish one and change it over to say something like bitly.com slash SEO book in the US stock market. And that might get you in my worried case I went with the name J.MP your future jump your future slash financial EMC finance uh, situation. So this is going to be the top five tips. To so I'll mention that here. Um, optional use link shorteners to craft your affiliate links better. Examples are uh, bitly.com. What else is there? Um, tiny, tiny, that's a classic one, tinyurl.com. There's another one called is gd is good. I, I think it's goo.gl. Um, so, You go to any one of these, you take a big address or a gibberish address, turn it into a meaningful address, and you, then you share that address. And that's optional. All right, so uh, that was our last idea for the moment. We'll have a little lab time until 4. Uh, maybe during this time, start to kind of look at the at the Amazon, well, I'm going to copy and paste the address directly to this handout so you can have it. Maybe start looking at the uh, at those AdSense or Amazon affiliates. So that uh, that's one way to um, Put some frosting on your cake to take your passion for blogging to the next level. And let's say you're doing all of this blogging anyway to get more traffic to your main website. Again, little icing on the cake. Put an AdSense ad on it 
and while you're getting traffic to your main website also get a little money off of people simply visiting your site especially for things that people want you know, especially for things that people want uh, want to buy and and uh, I like the Amazon affiliate links a little better because you can really craft things you can really choose exactly what people will see on the posts and such so that they really end up more likely buying or clicking Yes. Am I, am I correct on this? Uh, on AdSense, you get money if they click on the ad, but nothing further than that. But on Amazon Associates, they have to click and then buy? Yes. Okay. So on that one, uh, yes, exactly. If you've got an AdSense ad, they simply have to click. You'll profit from that. If you've got an Amazon affiliate link, they have to see the product, they have to click the product, and they have to buy the product and then you'll profit off of that. But most of the time when someone has gone that far with an uh, Amazon link, they really want that Spider-Man shirt, so they will buy it. All right, any other general questions? When we, yes, when we come back next week then, what we're going to do is talk about the short-form blog platform, which is Tumblr. Uh, what I would recommend, this always happens to us, when we try to create a Tumblr account together, Tumblr freaks out and says, why are 15, why are 20 people at this moment creating a Tumblr account? And some of us are able to and some of us not. So I'm going to ask you for homework, go to tumblr.com and create an account. Don't do anything with it except simply go to tumblr.com tumblr.com and create the account and try to do it as best as you can and, and if you can't quite do it we'll do it in class together but often what happens is when a lot of us try to do it at once it stops half of us because Tumblr says this is a spam farm 15 people are creating a Tumblr at once it's a it's a spam camp so so if you can do that before we come back that would be good We'll take, a, we'll take some lab time for the end of the day, so thank you for coming, and we'll do it again next time.